Hi, Signature Associates and friends. Welcome to the Signature Edge Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping you design an uncommon and impactful career in the business of healthcare. Together, we are making a difference for our clients by lowering the rising costs and administrative burdens associated with great care. Engage with us as we spotlight big ideas to discover an uncommon you through leadership, teamwork, and focus on the healthcare industry. Think deeply, commit fully, and take yourself to the next level of performance. Well, welcome back, everyone. My name is Mark Mathia. I'm your host, and I'm here today from our corporate headquarters at Signature Performance. And I want to say hi to my co-host, Amy Hennings, who's also here at our corporate office and the experience team. Amy, welcome. Hi, Mark. Good to see you. And Chris Woodhouse coming to you live from a remote location in a desert island somewhere <laughs> off the Pacific and leader of our Claims XM team. Chris, welcome. Hi, thanks, Mark. It sounds wonderful. I would love to be on an island in the South Pacific. <laughs> and yet here we are in Omaha on a rainy day. But it Indeed. is so nice to see your, your shining faces. Thanks for being here today. Team, we have begun a conversation about uncommon teams. And this new season of a podcast is a really important one because I think the future of work and what work is, especially when it relates to building teams, has completely um, evolved. We've we've adapted. Things have become uh, different in the post-pandemic era. And so I think it's really important that we're having this this conversation. And today we're really going to go deep on talking about creating a learning environment on your team. When you hear creative creating a learning environment, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? For me, I think it's mindset. So to to have an environment of learning, you, you have to have a mind willing to learn, right? You have to have people who are open-minded and excited to improve and step out of their comfort zone and grow. Chris, I think you're exactly right. I think the desire to learn and I think also the discipline to learn. Mm -hmm. I think that it's really easy um, to make, to plan learning and then push it to the side because mm -hmm. more important stuff comes. And I think that that's, you got to really, really push to make it a priority and a discipline in your life. And and I think it's really important to note too that that the mindset, everything that we talked about, really is self directed, right? It's it's how are we willing to step into the learning world ourselves? And yet, I think from a team perspective and building a great team perspective, I think it's important that the manager give permission for that kind of learning to take place. And as we thought about this, this is one of the things I find at Signature Performance that makes us very uncommon is this commitment to professional learning and development. I think that a lot of people still have one foot on the gas pedal and one foot on the brake, meaning they don't know if they have permission to learn. How important is it, in your opinion, that managers really set the stage and offer permission to associates to, to learn and, and always be growing in their career field. I think this is an area that sets Signature apart from many others, and it really does make us uncommon is because I feel like our managers are empowered to empower their people to learn. There's there's so many opportunities and there's so much available uh, to our teams to, to grow into from uh, our bridge tool with our online learnings to face-to-face -face learnings to the Emerging Leaders Program. There's so much available to them and they're given the time to do that even on the clock. And they're getting paid to not only learn, but to level up themselves, level up their career options. It's it's really part of our culture here that I find so amazing. Is like, we support you in growing to become a better you. And uh, even if it costs us to make that happen. It seems to me, and, and it seems to me like business today has made a shift to both self-directed learning and then organizational learning. But within the organizational learning is this, this thing called self-directional learning. Amy, how, how on, on the experience team do you cultivate a culture of learning? Like, can you give us some practical, like, what are you doing about this? For the experience team, I think learning starts with me. I think I need to be the one who's learning and demonstrating it and leading by example in that. 
but I also look for ways to teach the team and show the team that you can learn anywhere. And so I do things like yesterday, I assigned everyone to listen to a podcast. That's 30 minutes. You can learn how to, you can learn from that. And hopefully it helps people get into some different podcasts that they haven't seen before or thought of to listen before and get hooked into it. I'd love if they, if I found out in a couple of weeks that they've listened to more podcasts in that series. Um, we also have implemented masterclass. Um, I've bought everyone a subscription to masterclass. And so we're learning from people that you wouldn't normally learn from right now. We're learning from Anna Wintour, the editor of Vogue. There's a lot that we can learn from Anna Wintour on experience, but even though she's not teaching experience. Um, I learned a lot from watching the Kentucky Derby this year and wrote about it in the SPMG newsletter. The underdog, the one they thought no one gave a shot to win, was in last place coming out of the gate, won the Kentucky Derby. What do we have to learn from that? And finally, um, unfortunately, I do a lot of business um, life lesson teaching with The Bachelor. Um, everyone <laughs> watches The Bachelor and we um, talk about The Bachelor a lot on the team. And it's not because I like talking about The Bachelor. I usually can sneak in something about, um, yeah, what did that person, how did that person lead wrong? Or what would you do if, why did that person escalate drama and not de-escalate drama? I bet Addison, producer, doesn't even know that that's why I talk about The Bachelor with everybody. He, and so that is just one of the things that um, I think you can show that there's business lessons, leadership lessons everywhere around you in your life. So I think that's really interesting because many of those things you just mentioned, or, or a couple of them at least, are somewhat mundane, right? Two people can watch the exact same thing, give the Kentucky Derby. One person's going to learn from it that, you know, nothing is absolute, nothing's definite. You can come from behind. Underdogs can win. And one person's going to go, man, I lost money on that race. Or there's nothing here. I'm so upset, right? And it's really how we come to these situations and, and, and what mindset we are in. Like, what are we thinking about? What, what are we purposely pursuing in these events, in these podcasts, in these shows uh, as we approach them, you know, it has to be a level of intentionality to learn from these things. And as much as we like to get together and talk, you know, one of the the secret things is that this podcasting platform is an excellent resource for us to encourage other people as we share our stories and stories of signature performance and how to clue into this new environment, you know, along with the traditional coursework that we have. And, and I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about it. Signature U offers a full lineup of both live courses that we offer to our associates. Um, some are, are technical skills. Some would be considered leadership skills. And I, and I think they're both equally important uh, for our associates. But we also have things like writing and other avenues to help bolster and strengthen people's careers, um, which helps them become uncommon. In Signature U, we've also moved into that self-learning phase. So our learning management system, which you referenced, Chris, can be self-directed as well. And, and that's a really interesting component. And now, since we're in a hybrid environment, we're also going live virtual courses. And so we, we have a whole plethora of opportunities for people to plug in and learn. And yet, even in an organization that values learning as much as we value learning, you'll find that people still have a hard time or don't have permission or are reluctant to jump in and learn. If you two were sitting in front of one of those associates, or maybe it's another organization that says, I don't know if I have time to learn, not, not this week, not today, what would you, what advice would you give them? You know, the, the the phrase, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink comes to mind, you know, and uh, I've got people on my team who are anxious and, and willing to learn, they want to grow, they want to develop, they want their, they have this what's next mindset of how do I learn more information. And, and then I've got some folks who are like, I'm happy with where I am and I don't want to change and I don't want to pursue new opportunities. And it's interesting, Mark, because I find myself torn between, well, I want to encourage this person and I want them to learn. I want them to grow. I want them to go to the next step, but you can't necessarily force someone to do that. So that question is, is challenging. And I think, I think people go through phases in life, right, where they are open to it and they aren't. And I think from a, a leadership standpoint, it's a matter of consistency is, hey, how you doing? What's going on? 
are you interested in learning? You just keep on after these folks. And when you hit them in the right phase, they they go, oh yeah, I do think I want to level up. I do think I want to pursue something more, but they're not always open to it. So there is a, definitely a challenge there that we have to overcome as leaders. Chris, and I think you really spoke to spoke to something that that's really important. And, and I would say that that in my opinion, there's a baseline to learning. So there is learning to advance and to improve and to change. And then the other, the baseline of learning is to keep up. And I think in the evolution of business, things are moving so fast that this kind of learning in despite how comfortable we are with where we're at right now, uh, really requires us to learn something different. If we just look at uh, how communication trends have happened through the years and, and how much uh, that access has changed, we've had to learn how to deliver or education so that people could get there. So, so one of the things that, that, and I think you're spot on, how do we encourage it? Well, I think there's a baseline that, that should almost be, you know, more than permission. I guess you would say permission that looks like a requirement. Hey, keep up here because we're going to change. Um, and, and I know that then there's the other aspect of that, right? Like, I don't want to step in to advance my leadership career because, you know, managing 60 people, boy, that's just different than me being the best programmer or best project manager that I can be. Amy, what, what would your thoughts be in terms of addressing that same question? Yeah, it's hard. I think sometimes you have to show people how they have learned because maybe it's scary to change and to, to get better. And you don't, it, what if you try to do something, you know, you don't succeed. And so sometimes I think you can help people see how they have grown or look what you've learned this year um, and show people that they're learning, even if they don't think they are. But I also, as a manager, if someone's not willing to learn, I don't, I, I usually, they don't do great on my team. I'm not going to lie. Um, that's usually not something that is, um, that does very well because we have to evolve and have momentum and keep going um, and understand the trends in the industry and learn best practices. And I think that usually doesn't fly great with me. And and that's fair. And And yet a lot of times when we talk about learning, the first thing that comes to mind is college. And the, and what comes to mind when we start talking about college is tuition. And although most organizations have some program in there for that, I think learning goes way beyond that. How important is certification in this day and age as opposed to degree? I, I think it's more important uh, personally because certification and experience are I think reviewed because they're more specialized on folks' resumes. So if you see someone who's a project manager and they have what's called their project management professional certification, uh, that's an industry-wide known certification of extreme complexity to achieve. It, you have to have X number of years of experience, and you don't have to have a college degree at all to become a project manager. And so, when someone sees that on your on your resume or uh, you know next to your nameplate, they're going to know you've put in the work. You, you have the knowledge. You understand what's going on, and it's specific to the job function that is needed. So while college is, is very important, it br brings us to a lot of new ideas, new opportunities, opens our minds, teaches us how to learn in some aspects. From a career standpoint, I think it has less bearing than what you learn post-college, personally, my opinion. I think you're right, because my husband just completed his MBA, and they told him on the exit part of it that it will technically last six years that what you've learned in this will last six years in business because business, the change of business and things are going to change so fast. And so they help them create a plan for continuous learning. I think college is important. He's never going to lose that MBA from behind his name. There's um, He did that work. He did that work at night and early mornings, but he's going to have to continue learning and you can't just stop with an MBA because gosh, even when we were going through our books, all our business books, a lot of them, if they're written pre-pandemic, they don't really work. We, we, we donated them. And I think that's, you got certifications help you keep up with the speed of business, but don't underestimate college. I think there's a lot to learn from college. And, um, but I do think you got to have like a good combination and a good growth learning plan. And that really brings me to then how do we provide a platform where people can engage should they choose without being forced to engage? And I'm, I'm probably like both of you. I, I want to encourage it. 
I don't know that I would ever force it. Um, but at Signature Performance, for an example, we partnered with Bellevue University, uh, where we can triple the amount of tuition reimbursement associates can get and associates family members, which is really cool, um, so that they can pursue a higher education degree uh, should they choose to. Midland University, we've started our first apprenticeship program in the IT field um, where an associate could be on the phones with a high propensity towards computer development or programming, kind of building things, um, and launch into a career and education through the university system and practical application that can take them to a different way, a different career on the other side. That's in pilot right now, along with our healthcare administrative uh, services apprenticeship, which is the only one in the nation open to veterans, by the way, that can move. When I say open to veterans, it has a VA benefit attached that can move someone from being a executor, a doer of billing to a leader or consultant of operations in the revenue cycle. Um, those are just a few of the things that, that as an organization, we're opening up to. Um, one of our podcast alumni, Karina McHugh, is currently an apprenticeship program going through that and, and has really developed her sense of uh, leadership, skills, and appreciation for the healthcare industry as she's advanced her career in that as well. So it's really important, I think, for organizations to have the platform, but not necessarily, you know, force people in there. Force learning is is okay for baseline stuff, but when it comes to getting and growing a career that is flourishing, it just takes a little bit more. There's an element to that, Mark, too, where as leaders, we need to present for these folks a vision of where they can go, right? They don't necessarily understand what learning can do for them or what uh, the future could hold if they pursue different options, right? Uh, on the Claims XM side, we have career paths and we show how you can learn different specialties and how within those specialties, you can transfer to another specialty to learn more and to not only become more uh, utilitarian, but to broaden your horizons under your understanding of how claims processing works, how our system works, presenting that to my leads, you know, I was able to see some of them become senior leads and they're excited about it. They're, they're okay. What do I learn now? Who do I need to talk to next? Right. It's because they now have a vision. And then you take that a vision and you apply it to what goals do you have? You align the two and then make sure that the learning piece is in there to make that happen. You're exactly right. And 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 Claims XM does that extremely well. And talk about an environment where change is always taking place. And so to be that adaptive and to have those pathways in there is really important. Other parts of organizations, that's a little bit more challenging to do. How do we take this baseline skill set that we hired for and ready them to be the workforce of the future? Signature's response to date has been through programs like Emerging Leaders, um, which really helps strengthen our bench strength in terms of leadership and understanding of our entire business. The cadre or the teaching core of emerging leaders is every executive in the company. And this is a unique thing about Signature is every executive in the company raises their hand and says, I want to help educate the workforce of tomorrow. I want to help ready us because our mission to really reducing and lowering the administration costs and burdens of care is so important to us that if we're going to get this right, we're going to need that next level leadership in there. As we move forward, team, let me ask you this question. I'll start with you, Amy. How would we encourage our listeners to move forward? If, you, if they could take one actionable nugget from our conversation today about learning, what would it be? What's our next steps? I would say just get started and start small. Sometimes you to get started, you put this grand old plan together and it's it's not starting a new habit. It's not attainable to do some some big massive thing. I think to start small, start with 10 minutes a day. I'm willing to change my drive time 10 minutes a day to a podcast versus the radio. That's a great first step. It's a great first step to say on Friday afternoons at one o'clock, I'm going to just, I'm going to spend a half an hour getting better at something, researching something, listening, finding a thought leader I like to follow and, and learning that way. So that's what I would say. I would say sometimes you, to go sign up for a big certification is, is great, but can be really overwhelming. Start small, start, start with one drive 
to work listening to something other than music and see see what happens and get momentum and look for lessons everywhere there are lessons everywhere even on the bachelor and even on love is blind there's actually a lot of messages a lot, a lot, a lot of life lessons on love is blind uh, season three now out i do not disagree uh mark i would say the thing that they should do depending on their position is as a frontline employee or someone who wants to level up go talk to your your manager go talk to your supervisor and say what do i need to do to make it to the next step because there should be a clear path there of what to learn what to grow in and as managers and leaders you should be asking the question what do i need to communicate to my team to help them reach the next level so our job as leaders is not to keep people where they are. It's to make replicants of ourselves to help people grow to where we are and so that we can grow to the next level ourselves. And that's how we as a company continue to become better and better. Well, Chris, Amy, thank you so much for being part of this conversation today. As we continue to think about how we cultivate and curate uncommon teams at Signature Performance and within the healthcare industry, I really appreciate your wisdom and guidance that you offer. And everyone who's listening to this podcast, thanks for tuning in. We'd really like to hear from you. And if you have questions about what we're doing as an organization to promote education uh, within our walls, we'd be happy to talk to you. You can reach out to Amy Hennings, Chris Woodhouse, or myself, uh, including our um our director, Addison Stoddard, if you have questions and need further information about our programming or what we like to do to continue to learn and grow. Thanks for being here, team. I appreciate you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Mark. Bye, everyone. Signature Performance is the foremost leader in healthcare administration. Your work advancing our mission is transforming healthcare in the U.S. Signature is bringing together the best and brightest in healthcare. Discover opportunities at www.signatureperformance.com slash careers.